I've dreamt of having an in-the-wall aquarium ever since I was a kid. I vividly remember first seeing such a thing at a Christmas party around the age of five. But even as an adult, I still find this style of setup very desirable. And the moment I got the new house, I knew I could finally bring this all to fruition. At first, I didn't know where it should go. Of all places though, I decided on the bathroom. I mean, who doesn't want to observe an aquatic ecosystem when nature calls? Seriously though, why the bathroom? Rewind a few months ago when I was framing everything to create a utility closet in the animal room's bathroom. I had it insulated and was about to cover it with drywall until I had a revelation. None of this is structural, so why not adjust the framing to accommodate a fish tank? Easy enough. I removed the insulation to cut out a portion of the middle frame and leveled out a support for the front, but the tank didn't fit. I marked along the top board and accounted for the thickness of another. Then I cut off the excess. I leveled out a second board on this for the top. More screws ensured everything was secure. I went on to measure the aquarium and created the back half of the stand. I counted for this on the front and affixed it accordingly. As you can see, the tank fit well. However, I had to put more framing on the sides to better support the drywall. I need to point something out here that I didn't film. I used these boards on the sides here just to level out the front. I later swapped them with boards that went all the way to the floor for support. Anyway, I went on to hang the drywall on the front. I marked the corners from the inside, cut along the wood with a keyhole saw, and peeled back the rest. This framed in the tank beautifully. Fast forward and I finished the drywall, painted everything, and added the door. That said, I still have to support the back of the framing. I put a small frame on the bottom that I locked to the wall. I bridged the gap with other boards and locked them in with brackets. Now this can hold the tank. However, there is one remaining issue. The frame of the tank sits beyond the glass and thus beyond the drywall. This will be problematic later if I leave it like this. So what I did was remove the front of both the top and bottom frames. To make things appear as clean as possible, I'll drill the tank to include a canister filter. I took an appropriately sized diamond tipped hole saw, set up a guide, poured in some water to keep it from overheating, and drilled away. Eventually I made it through. Then I repeated it for the second hole. I sanded down the edges as well. You'll see that I put one in the top for the filter's return, and one in the bottom for the filter's intake. Before I install the bulkheads, I'll secure a background so you can't see through the tank. I taped on the back panel, marked for the bulkheads on the sides, cut out the holes, added the bulkheads, and taped up the side panels. I also included a lock line for the return, a strainer for the intake, and barbed elbows on the exterior of each. This looks great. Having this in the wall and only being able to see it from the front will make maintenance somewhat challenging. With that in mind, keeping a simple approach with the setup is probably my best option. I'll start at the bottom with substrate, more specifically a layer of aqua soil. I'll fill in the rest with fluorite. This stuff is incredibly dirty, so I thoroughly sprayed it off to remove debris. After adding it to the tank, I sloped it up toward the back to improve the sense of depth. I'll design the entire scape around this single eucalyptus root. My only issue with it are these flat sections. I chipped away at them with a chisel and hammer until it looked like this. It's only a subtle difference, but significant enough to make it look more natural. Additionally, the light areas will darken to match everything else once the piece is submerged. I also covered the strainer with a coarse filter sponge. Continuing with the scape, I added various chunks of savory stone around the driftwood. I carefully nested them in to ensure it was all seamless. I was pleased with how it was coming together, but I had to shift the entire scape to the left. I felt like the top right of the scape was lacking as well. I fit another piece of wood in place to help balance this out. However, I have to lock it in so it doesn't float. Easy enough because the original branch is already waterlogged. I stuck this one to it with cotton balls and super glue. After that, I'd say this is a great foundation to build from. Time for the details. I brushed aside the substrates from before to create a void in the front. I filled this with a fine gravel that matches the stones. I proceeded to cover everything with this and evened it out to preserve the slope from earlier. Small stones help tie everything together. I nested a branch in the back as well. I poured white sand over this in the front to break up the stonework. It's looking good, but I want to fill it up to rinse away excess debris before I add the plants and to ensure the driftwood stays put. I'm honestly paranoid that it will try to float away, so fingers crossed. It 
stayed in place. I swear, this wasn't manufactured drama. The primary branch has been sitting outside for five months now, and I assumed it was still waterlogged when I started. The more I worked on it though, I began having doubts. As you saw, I kept stopping while I filled, because I didn't want to go to the point of no return, and I kept hearing bubbles pop up and they were freaking me out. Anyway, it stayed submerged, so we're good to proceed. I imagine a lot of the hardscape being covered by moss long term, so I did what I could to facilitate that. I placed java moss over the glue spots and other areas. They would probably just float away like this though, so I tied them on with fishing line. Eventually this will all cling to the scape and spread, so the line is only needed for now. Then I set forth to add the epiphytes. These are plants that prefer to grow outside of the substrate. It's best to wedge them throughout the hardscape like this, ensuring their rhizome, this horizontal stem, isn't buried. So that's exactly what I did. You'll also see that I went really heavy on the anubius to add a lot of easily maintained foliage. I sprayed all of this down to ensure it didn't dry out. I finished by adding a few simple plants directly into this substrate. I used Rotala indica as an accent against some of the dark green plants and to fill in empty spots. I created a little field of dwarf sagittaria as well. And that more or less completed the process. I moved the tank over to the stand and got to work setting it up. I hooked the filter up to the barbed fittings and locked them in with hose clamps. Additionally, I built a shelf for the filter so it could be closer to the tank. I guess this would be a good time to also mention that I have an LED light hooked up to a digital timer, as well as a set of polycarbonate lids I'll add at the very end. Now then, I filled it up, adjusted the plants, trimmed up a few sections, netted out debris, and turned on the filter. With that addressed, I was able to finalize the look of the outside with the trim boards. I added a few more Nubius as well. And at this point, things are looking pretty good to me. I'll just add a few supplements including Fritz ACCR to ensure the water is animal safe, trace elements for stability, and of course turbo start nitrifying bacteria. I also cleaned the outside with a glass cleaner. And as always I should mention that all of this was received with a paid promotion through Fritz Aquatics. I don't know about you, but I really like how it turned out. It will look even better with the fish, shrimp, and snails though, so why don't we add them? To see this lifelong dream realized is so incredible. And although it might seem silly to have put it in the bathroom, I actually think this is the perfect spot for it. Going with a simple layout definitely was the right move, and it should be pretty easy to maintain moving forward. In addition to that, I love having all of the equipment behind the wall. If I have one complaint though, it's how shy the fish are. I know that emerald dwarf rasboras are shy by nature, but in this case I think it's primarily because this is a new environment and they will become bolder in time, but still. Either way, the overall ambiance is what I was going for here and it turned out better than I could have imagined. I still have to finish up the bathroom, but this gem of a tank is giving me the motivation to get it done. I want to know what you think though. Would you put a fish tank in your bathroom and how do you think I did with this one? Also, how do you feel about the over or under debate? Seems like the right time to ask. Obviously you can see where I stand. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the project. Until next time Serpa Squad, take care and peace.